So we're going to talk about heads again, and we're going to start talking now these next, I'm not sure, two, three, whatever lessons about the head in great, ever more dynamic perspective, because obviously that's a problem for all of us. So we're working with that um, LTL idea. And what that is, is showing how the skull goes back and the face goes down, despite the hairstyle, despite the features. And then we build off that upside down, kind of back, or I guess just upside down L. Um, we build off that the whole head and face, uh, head and uh, uh, skull and face structure. And we can do it super simple like this, which uh, I got that idea from the wonderful Vernon Wilson who taught me how to draw. Uh, and then you could, instead of or on top of, build on a simplified or more nuanced, depending, um, face and skull shape. And um, then you're good to go. So we could dust back that, and we could have done that more precise, nuanced, or more simplified as I started out, whichever way you want to go. And then, so that's an L, and then we just connect and we make that kind of that sailboat shape is, is a simplified version. And then we're going to look for the T in another L. So we got this one done. Now we're going to look for the T, and that's the center line down through the features. And of course, that center line, if it's a perfect profile or if it's a back view, as we notice when the ear gets closer to the face, then we can't get that T. And we can't really get the other L, and that can create issues. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. But if I can see the T, which means front or three quarter range, when we get to the profile or the back three quarter back views, we don't see all of them. Oftentimes we only see one of them. But if I can see the center line down through the features, the eyebrow line, just simplified, I usually just look for where the eyebrows arch. The eyebrow line, that's a T. And then the eyebrow line back to the ear, that's the other L. When we get that, we're getting this boxy idea. And to make it super simple and pretty crude for the moment, we're getting this idea. And once we get the length, let's change colors, the length, the width, and the depth, and the depth, those are both showing depth lines. But it's relating the skull, let's say the part down the center of the hair, to the face, the part of the uh, parting of the features, symmetry of the features. And then the face feature, facial features on the front through the eyebrow, or it could be the eye or both, to the ear, which is on the side of the head, the side of the box. And now we've got a completion of this structural way to see the world, this what I call box logic. And then we can turn that into rounder, more tubular, uh, more nuance, all that kind of stuff. But once we start getting that, we're good. And I said, you can't find that that uh, T on a back view, a three-quarter back view. It's not quite true. We can't find it from the eyebrow line. Well, even that's not quite true. We can find it from the eyebrow. Let's say, let's say there's the uh, lashes. I could put that in a little better spot, couldn't I? The lashes. Here's the nose, a little bit of lips, chin. Jaw would be in here. Digastric plane would be underneath. That's all great, but it's still pretty flat. We do have this lovely overlap of the eye socket cheekbone over all those front features. Eyes, or at least eyelash, nose, lips, and so on. But we don't have that nice box logic. So what we can do is put the 
hill back here. It's a little more wandering. It's not as tied to landmarks, but it's also more room for error because we're going to round that off. We're probably going to put hair over the top of it, some hair style. So we'll hide any inaccuracies we may have. But by getting that back of the skull separating from the side of the skull and visualizing it, even if I can't see it because it's under the hair, visualizing that, and if it's not quite right, it's good enough. We'll cover it with that beautiful hairstyle. So if we can envision that, good things happen. Because now we're thinking the full form. The, we're seeing the full structure, not just what we see, but what we can't see, because we're only seeing half of it at most. So, and the audience will be pretty forgiving on, on what we imagine and uh, the little inaccuracies that um, almost certainly might, will show up, but they won't know any better than us usually, and we'll be good to go. And then once we have that box logic of what's the front and what's the side and what's the top and what's the bottom, and in this case, what's the side and what's the back, what's the side and what's the back, notice how relatively easy it is to then apply values. This is all shadow, this is all darker value. Every time a form, no matter what it is, turns towards the left of my paper, it's gonna get darker. Anytime it turns to the front side, or whatever little bit we can see of the far right side, it gets lighter. Anytime it turns down, down, it gets darker and so on. And all I do just to rough estimate where the corner is of this very round form Just copy this for a second. Overlaps are wonderful things. Overlapping the neck over the digastric plane and the throat. The cheekbone, eye socket, forehead over the features, the ear over the side of the head, and so on. Picking those things up creates a wonderful bit of information. And so when we look at this and imagine that egg shape idea, oftentimes we overround things. Notice how this feels much flatter and slightly out of character, ever so slightly compared to this, even though this is too high maybe and too far back. But it gives us that clear boxy idea and we forgive those inaccuracies. Let's see, there we go. So if I could imagine the boxy idea and then round it off, I'll probably make slight, with some practice, slight adjustments and make even the roundest thing slightly squarish. I'm gonna overdo it maybe more than you might do if you're doing a more nuanced, lovely round skull but I'm going to give a little rounded corner as that beautiful round skull goes from side to back. I'm going to want that curve to speed up just a little bit around where it, the corner would be. I think of 
grandma's nice thick quilt over the corner of the bed, it rounds off. Thick carpet over the stair step, it rounds off that corner, but we still feel since that corner. So LTL, but there's gonna be times where we can't see the LTL. As I said, we might just see the L, or we might just see the T. I'll show you that in a second. But if we can see, if it tends to be in the three quarter views, then we can do a good job, even if we can't see everything, we can do a good job of finding a new layer here. Finding those, uh, those structural ideas, those structural choices. There's my L. Here's my T. Here's my other L. And notice once I get these things, we're going to see parallels happen. So if that's the eyebrow line, that's the eye line. That's the tip of the nose. It'd be somewhere in here. That's the front center of the lips. That's the chin before it takes off as it takes off. And if we think structurally, even if we're off a little bit, it's better than if we didn't. Here's the, the simplified hairline. Give it a Dracula widow's peak there. There's the back of that boxy skull or the back of that rounded skull. Even if it's a little off, and notice it is a little off, it still has a sense of structure. And since we're not drawing anything without relating it to one or more other things, we start to tie things together visually and we can make corrections. Oh, wait a second. Now I see when I got all those construction lines in, that It should have been a little different. Well, when I look at, oh, let's change that. If I look at that, it's actually going this way, a little more that way, that way, that way. And now I realize that probably the upper lip should be a little closer, lower lip should be there. Chin should be there. Maybe the ear is over this way, a little lower that way. Can't see that ear, but I'm going to imagine it. And if it's off, it's better than nothing. And it'll get covered and we'll never see it. So I'll keep working with those things. And sometimes I'll draw that and say, okay, that's better. Now I'm going to put in my high arching eyebrows and my wedged nose. And then I realized, whoops, it should have been somewhere in between. I had to change that thing three times to get it right, which is quite all right. Because at the end of it, I'll get it better. And at the end of it, I might get it better than the reference. Not that I'm going to draw better than uh, Rubens. But I might say, well, shoot, I want it more dynamic. Or that reference looks a little off. And even old masters can do things that are a little out of whack. Maybe because the model's eyes were a little, and eye sockets were a little asymmetrical. Or maybe he just did it wrong. That happens to everybody. And I'm going to correct it to my 
true north, my personal right, not worrying about his choice, gives me perspective. It gives me the relationship between things. And it's only in relationship do we know if any one thing's right. So the LTL helps tremendously with that. And then we can also start using it to create perspective ideas. And we talked about how we can use the uh, eye socket. And so, and again, we're not seeing the full back of the head going back. We see it cut off, cut off, cut off. But if we follow that movement back of that L down here, down here, Get a little prettier color than that. And I know that needs to be at least a right angle here or a little greater. And now I'm going to pick out and I'll make it more curved. And I might even choose to use that beautiful egg-like shape that the Rococo artist Tieplo chose to use. And then I'll put the boxy LTL on that round egg-shaped design. There is the L. I have no idea how far that skull goes back, but it's going to get covered up. And as I build more, ever more um, nuanced and numerous relationships, I can get a better handle on it. And if I'm patient, I'll just keep adjusting until I get it to ring true for me or learn why they drew it their particular way to make it read true for them and see if I like that or can learn from that. And we just plot those things out. And whatever we can't see, we do the best we can of placing on the paper in our mind. And when I'm learning how to do something I always put on the paper to see what it feels like and then later I can shortcut it and we slowly build that L, T, L and any of these L's or T's, T not so much, but the L's can be curved and even the corner between the L and the, the front of the L face and top skull or eyebrow line to ear can be rounded if you wanted but I like to do it sharper at first to think of that boxy idea. And then what we found was once we start getting that thinking, now we can build three dimensional ideas on top of that. And we can feel the eye socket or the, I'm not sure how to do that where the um, eyebrow drifts down and it meets the base of the lower lid or the light of the cheek, anywhere in here is okay. And we get this zigzag that's a boxy version of the eye socket. And then everything this way is front, everything that way is side. In this case, the side planes are getting darker, not the front planes. And then we can, we haven't really learned how to work this out yet, but uh, we can work our way down and up for the forehead. Now this is all front of the forehead. This is all front of the cheek. We'll see that symmetry it bumps here. We'll see it bump a little bit, usually at the contour and so on. And then we can, once we get fairly good at that, then we can start laying in our values. Everything that's far to the right side gets darker, whether no, no matter what it is. And anything that turns down gets darker. This turns far to the right side. The nose gets darker. Eyeball turns far to the right side. The temple area far to the right side. The hair far to the right side. 
gets darker. The cheekbone for the right side gets darker. The underside of each of these bits gets darker and so on. We can plot it out and then we can start moving it into deeper and deeper perspective. And we can use that eye socket off the L, off the T. And we can only see a little bit of the T right here. It's almost a perfect profile, but we're seeing a little bit of it. It's, we're way underneath it. So now the eyebrow on the front eyebrow line and the ear on the side become critical tools in very quickly getting the sense of where that head is sitting in space. In this case, deeply tilted into perspective. If we just used a box, it gets a little confusing. So if we can start it with the closer to the shape of the skull, well, I'll just leave that, I guess, closer to the shape of the position, not even the shape, the position of the skull to the face, doing whatever choice we want for those, and then going as quick as we can from the eyebrow line to the ear, now we're getting the turn, three-dimensional turn, the depth of that box, side plane to front plane, side plane faces us, front plane is going radically away. We are underneath it. As soon as we get that idea, we're getting very clearly that structural idea, that three-dimensional idea. And it's just a matter of practice and refinement and patience and all that kind of stuff. And then if we can take that eyebrow, here are the eyebrow. Let's change that. Here are the eyebrow and bring it down into the where the cheekbone meets the lower lid, the lower edge of the lower lid, <clears throat> right there, and think of it like a whistle notch. But since I'm tracking the eyebrow, it usually has a little bit of an arch to it. Just has very little, but a little bit of an arch. So I usually make that sharper and you can chisel it off or round it off. Either way, take your pick and you can round it more or less. Take your pick, play with that. And then the eyeball sits right in there. And we start to see then structure right away. So we'll spend time, probably another lessons, uh, going over kind of iterations of that, taking it farther as we get more information. But let's stop there on that point for now and look at two other situations where we don't have the LTL, hardly any of it. So if we get a front view, and especially a front view that we're underneath, and we're not going to draw these this time. Let's see, but um, just to realize, if we treat that as a just a mask of a face, that we're underneath, and it could be a capsule shape, it could be a boxy shape. It gets hard because we don't have the face in relationship to the skull. 
and all the phase is taking up, all we're getting is a T and we're getting very little. And if there's hairstyle, almost no sense of those other L's. So it's going to give us trouble if we can't see any skull at all. We're going to have to deal with that, but not today. The other problem is, what we got here, is if we don't see hardly any face at all, or any face at all, or no face, little face, no face. This is a Raphael study of uh, Michelangelo's David. And here it's all skull. And we know skulls are very round things. So if we draw the skull, and oftentimes we can't even see the skull because of the hair, but we take our best guess and we'll cover it with the hair. So we draw that skull, then we'll find little or no face. And we've got a series of overlaps that are gonna give us trouble. What we can see sometimes is the ear. And if we can feel a little bit of the ear, how close that is. Remember, if we go back to the LTL, if we move that ear quite close to the face, we get that three quarter back view. And that ear is critical in helping us realize that three dimensional idea and that proportional structure. And I should say what I do is put another ear behind the ear and make sure that top of the skull goes up in a similar angle or greater. And then that becomes where I pick out that corner and apply that tone. Some boxier version, an ear or so, more or less, and you got room to play, more or less an ear or so beyond the actual ear. Now, if the ear gets super close, then it's all but touching the, that little sliver of the face. And if you're lucky, you might see a little bit of the ear on the other side poking out. And now that helps a lot. Those ears help this place. So sometimes the skull gets it covers all the face, and sometimes the face covers all the skull. And that can also happen in extreme um, back views. There it is there. And extreme top views. This isn't a super extreme top view. <clears throat> and again, we're going to save these super extreme ones for another time, probably next week. But right now I want to talk about things as they're getting into a significant perspective and we're losing face or we're losing not more, more not um, in terms of public standard, we're losing face uh, and or skull one way or another. And what we'll find is if we can get that LTL in those three quarter views, then when we get into a front view, where there's little or no skull or a back view or a top view where there's little or no face, then we can start easing towards a solution. But we're still gonna use the LTL a little bit. So whenever something's hidden, some of the information's hidden, it's another wonderful Raphael, or you're unsure, then go to that LTL and draw it the best you can, and then it will get hidden by, in this case, the hair. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. Here is the T, and then this is the L. Now, it doesn't go that back that far, but I'll overshoot it so I know I'm wrong and then I'll come back and correct it later. So I'll oftentimes do that, especially if I'm analyzing something after the fact or I'm struggling with something that's in front of me, I gotta start someplace. I'll start there and then I'll build around that. Okay, so that should be a little bit more lifted on that left, that's too far down. I'll make little micro adjustments. This should go this way slightly and so on. <clears throat> but 
when I end up adding that hair off of all this, I'll do whatever I do to create this structure. When I do whatever I do to get that basic structure, and then I add, let's see here, then I add the hairstyle. Look at how this hairstyle kind of goes this way. We don't want to have that happen. I want to make sure that I am visualizing a full skull under there. Let's do it actually this way. We'll leave it there, actually. I want to make sure I'm imagining a full skull under there. And um, it's real, going to be real easy to short shrift, shrift that skull. So I'd rather have too much skull. And yeah, that should be up higher. And oftentimes if I think of the hairline under the bangs, let's say, and the back of the head, as a boxier idea. When I started seeing that, I, I realized, oh, I, I was looking at this bulge here. <clears throat> That's probably not the best way to look at it. If I think of this, and look at how these line up pretty closely. And if they don't line up perfectly in the beginning, and they may not in the real quirky person, <clears throat> real quirky hair, so if they don't line up perfectly, I'll adjust them so they're perfect. And then in the final finish, I might go back to the reality I saw or the master I was copying, but I'll go to that perfect box logic of the bangs of the hairstyle. If it's curving hairstyle, just like it's curving eye, Browse. I'll look to the, the mirror image of the curve where the curve arcs and changes or something. Make sure that's tracking all the way through. And then making sure I've got a good skull that has some box logic to it so I can see where the side's going to meet the top and the front and so on. And then I'll move on. LTL. So oftentimes the, the information will be missing. Visualize it anyway. And then let's see where is that other one? So same way here. I want to feel that skull in there. Now make it maybe a little bigger than it should be. Fill up that hairstyle a little bit more than it maybe really is so I can feel a good big solid. Feel the connections I can't fully see. And get a sense of that. And then, if I haven't already, see here. Uh, 
I'll think of it as a little box here. And I'll play with it as a boxy idea, kind of chiseling out the ball idea. To feel back to side. Just find that, a little less sloppy than that maybe, but just find that. And then you'll end up covering it over with the rounder and the more rendered and the details and stuff. So I'll go back to those squares and there, those are their own kind of LTLs. Imagine the hair is parted, some weird fantasy Hunger Games kind of hairstyle or something. Imagine that skull is boxy and then the hairstyle on top of it to see that. And then I'm gonna watch very carefully When I start drawing things, whether I can see the whole of the skull and the face shape, that L of the profile or not, because look what can happen when we start looking at these constructions here. It's gonna be really easy to see these faces with a skull that goes back. And then when you try and add the stuff to it, it's just not believable. It's not satisfying because you cut off the back of the skull. So sometimes you can look through like that hairstyle on the Raphael. We look from point to point and let it curve and feel that LTL. And sometimes we can then get away with that just fine by looking past the curve and not going too high or not seeing this and going too low this way, but it's jumping past the organic interruption to see that more boxy idea. So I'm not gonna use this for the L. I'm gonna use this for the L and this for the T. And despite what that, those odd Renaissance hats are doing, I'm gonna make sure I get that correct bit. So just look at things like this and just track them. Not here, that's not gonna feel right. Here. That's gonna feel better and so on. Look, make sure it lifts up enough. Even if it goes outside the contour of what you think you're seeing there, don't let that back of the skull fall down because of the perspective that's a little confusing. Look for that opening up of the skull a little, probably not that much higher, but a little higher. And I'd rather be higher and have to trim away a little bit than be lower and have to pack it on. So pay attention to those things. And so when we look at the Raphael, we looked at the other day, last week or whenever it was, we're looking for that lift of the chin drift back to the skull, but still roughly a right angle, filling it in or filling it in. And then where is the eyebrow? Eye socket, 
nose, mouth. I might need to get all those things to figure out where the chin is. Forehead, I might need to drift that back. So kind of a simplified uh, uh, contour or, or simply marking off where the positions of the features are to the best of your ability at the time. And then feeling that the ear goes down not necessarily parallel to that, but it can be. But I'll look at it independently and then how close it is to the front of the face. And then the skull would be in here and that wonderful head wrap would be in here going this way this way, even more so. So see how lightly, carefully we need to tread? How many things have to be working in concert with each other until we're sure usually, at least for me it's true. Where is the ear compared to the eye socket? Can I find some landmark on the back of the skull or hairstyle or, or, um, or um, head wrap or hat that suggests where it is despite the, suggests where it is despite the off axis detail so that I'm tracking well. And checking one thing to the other and every time I get something else it's a new relationship to check everything else so that's what we want to try and uh, follow through on looking for each of those LTLs as much as we can from every position we can and when we can't see them we'll still look for them we'll still imagine them and we'll then draw with a greater, more three-dimensional understanding of what's on top, what's underneath, what's front, what's side. And then as things round off and foreshorten and get weird, we have some measure of truth, some yardstick to work with, um, and a much greater chance of, um, of getting it right. All right, so I think we'll stop there.